they clap for it. We stop, we stop, they know it's my time watching. He threw a few shots, I dodged it. Send a couple rounds like a bagel. Yo, rich nigga, by my pacers. Spit the hot shit, my volcano. You niggas is trash, tomatoes. They be on the press, the issue. They press the clout. I'm gonna have to check them if you keep my niggas' mouth. Going on, y'all. This thing is me, it's daddy, do it sound. You just press it forward, teach you. Gonna be a good one today. They press the for cloud, they cloud press. 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 You nigga like the third on my name. You press the for claims. Damn, I thought you was making some money. The YouTube and only that checks ain't cut. That shit lit. I feel like it's real lit. Um, they press it for clout, they clout pressing. You feel me? That's from your boy Stallion. You know, he's our guest today, which I'm super excited. We've been meaning to do this for a long time, and I'm glad we got the chance to get him on today. Um, but, you know, before we get into that, we got to shout out our sponsors. You know, our first sponsor is AD from Love & Hip Hop Hollywood. Well, yes, she sponsors the show. She has a clothing line called Dig The Kicks. She got everything from dad hats to sweaters to um, T-shirts, shorts. She got it all. It's super lit. Joggers. Make sure y'all go hit her up. Dig the kicks, DTK.com. And when you're there, type, uh, hit that promo code and type in Royal so you can get 15% off. We are also sponsored by SwagNationMagazine.com, which is the number one independent artist magazine in the nation, also reaching 75 countries worldwide, where we had the honor and the privilege of gracing their magazine cover. We are the first LGBT entrepreneurs to grace their magazine, and I'm super excited for having accomplished that goal. We're making histories out here, guys. We're making histories, and it's thank you to you guys who keep watching every week that makes all of this happen. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm super excited about today. We're going to talk about, you know, where he came from, how he got started. We're going to talk about the come up. It's going to be super lit. I'm super excited. I cannot wait, guys. Let's see where he's at. If we can get him in here. They press it for cloud. They cloud press it. 
without what's, what's up going on, man? what's up how are you good how are you thank you thank you for you know blessing our platform thank you for becoming a royal couch family member i know we've been meaning to do this for a long time so i'm happy we can well we we here so, we here, we here now time. Look, we, we here, here now. now. You already so. know it. <laughs> I know that's right. I know that's right. Well, you got big things to talk about, so I'm excited to talk to you. Um, but you know how we get started here. Let everyone know where they can find you and where they can find your music at. Okay, well, my name is Darion. Um, you can find me on the Come Up ATL on YouTube on Gemini Films. And then you can also find me on Twitter at R-B-T-C-H-B-T. And then my Instagram name is Darion. You can see it up at the top. And then my um, music is on Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, anything, any platform. You can find SoundCloud, YouTube, anything. It's at Stallion. Just search one of my songs. Go on my page. You can find it. I know that's right. Well, we play your music at the intro of the, you know, of this program. So I'm excited. I like Clout, you know, pressing. It has a great hook that he Thank you. just stays at the <laughs> It's in my head now, like you told me, you can't get it out your head. So for that's cloud. dope. Look, press for cloud. You know what I mean? Which I feel like, you know, everyone a little something, something presses for cloud. Just a mm -hmm. little something, something. You know what I mean? Especially yeah. when you want to become a, a public figure. Mm -hmm. But anyway, let's get before all of this, and I want to get to the come up. I know everyone's waiting for the tea or the come up and all of that good stuff. But I want to get to know you a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And let me know was rapping and entertainment always what you wanted to do like is this always been your dream like what was it before all of this you know excitement going on well um rapping came from okay i used to do poetry i i, I love poetry that's my main like i love poetry and i have i was writing a lot of poetry i was in poetry class in high school so my friend his name is zay and he just hit me up and he was like, do a song. So I was like, I was thinking about it. I was like, oh, should I? So then I tried it. I was like, okay, it's pretty cool. But if you know me, I always say rapping is not my thing. Like, I'd rather be behind the scenes and produce or like write music or okay. basically like help people with their music. Right, 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 right. Well, I think you have definitely have something going for yourself. And, you know, if you keep striving, we had KSB um, on here recently. And um, for he had, you know, we named his top five favorite rappers and you was a part, you was in mm -hmm. that top five. So, yeah. you know, I mean, you have credit out here in these streets and people <laughs> recognize you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All of my, to be honest with you, you know, this is an unbiased show. I'm not biased to anybody. I, you know, I fuck with all of y'all. You feel mm -hmm. me? I respect all of y'all, especially that y'all yeah. are young black men striving for y'all success. That's a beautiful thing. And I want all of y'all to, to succeed. I agree. But all of your fans, every time I do this review, all of your fans come and bombard the the, the live, talking about, so where, where's Dario? Where's Stallion? Where's Stallion? Where's Dario? So... Finally, I know your fans are definitely happy right now. I hope they is. <laughs> so what what led you into actually, okay, you did the song, your friend told you to do the song. What actually led you to be like, okay, I really want to do this and take this seriously versus just doing music and, you know, marketing it off your bucket list? Well, I have a thing for sounds. Like, I love good music and I love good I just love energy. Like, I love energy and the things words can put into place, like creating stuff. Like, words and beautiful sounds put it together, it just makes magic to me. Right, it does. And that's why, uh, like, like I told you before, I like poetry. And so, it just really came from that, really. It feeds your soul anyway, because it's still mm -hmm. the same thing as poetry. Yeah. So, well, so. That first song that you did, was that just a poem that you turned into a song? Mm -mm, I read it. I just I just wrote something. I said read. I wrote um mm -hmm. wrote something and it just it just magically happened. Now that song that I first did, Scrap, I said, We gotta take that shit down because I I did not <laughs> I, I promise you, like like rapping, I only been rapping for a year. Oh wow. So it's like 
it's like I'm learning. No, and, 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 and that's dope, though. You know, and, and even with you taking it off, I wish I would have heard that one because what it does, it's like, you know, for example, not if anyone likes her or not like her, but it's like Cardi B. People love her so much because people felt like they grew with her. They, they, they you know, saw her when she wasn't so good, and now she's so amazing. You feel what I'm saying? So it was, you there? Sorry. Sorry. No, you're fine. You know, people grew with her. So it was like, you know, I felt like, you know, I'll go with the journey with you. you know, mm -hmm. I'm growing with you. So that would be dope for your fans to grow with you so that when you are a mega star, they could be like, I was there for the journey with yeah. you. You know what I'm saying? Most definitely. So what got you into, okay, I, I'm, in, I'm, I'm, I'm rapping. My music is out there. What got you to where the come up came up and where you or you know, reality TV, period. Like, why reality TV? This is my thing. At first, I wanted to, I was looking at to do the season one, but I didn't know myself as much and I didn't know my careers. Now I know myself. I'm very confident in myself. And hey, to, to Anthony, just drawing y'all, say hey to St. Anthony. <laughs> y'all got to interview him next. But um, it was just most or, more so like, I don't, I honestly don't know why. I honestly can't even tell you the answer to that. I wish I knew why. But it was like, it was a good opportunity. I can say that. It was a good, so was mm -hmm. that something that, okay, so. When I went, and let me tell you this, actually, when I went on the show, I'm sorry to cut you off, but when I went on the no, show, I actually was like, okay, well, this can be a good way to get um, some fans or like get my music more out there. It was more so for business. Oh, no, and, and that's good for exposure. Yeah. And, you know, putting your brand out there, which is great. It's great. And the come up gets a lot, thousands and thousands of views. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think that's great. And anybody will, you know, jump at that opportunity, I think, anyway. So, with you being on the show, was that something that you was like, I want to show my brand as I'm going to do whatever I need to do as far as, you know, let's be ratchet, let's do this? Or was it something where it was like, I want to show myself in a more positive way and kind of elevate my brand? I wanted to show myself in a positive way, but I already knew it was going to be like a negative side to the show because that's what reality is. But I, want, I was more so trying to show myself. I wasn't trying to be extra. I was just trying to be myself. Right, right, right. And at first I was like, low-key, like, okay, maybe I don't need to, like, do too... I don't want to do too much, like, because, like, I really, personally, if you know me personally, I have a mouth on me. I have a smart mouth. I say what's on my mind. So when I got on the show, I really wasn't doing that. Right, right. So I really wasn't, like, in the beginning, I wasn't myself. But then I was like, I'm not going to change myself for these people. So. Was it hard to be in front of the cameras and not, like, really yeah, steady but... looking at them and... And were you camera shy, or is that something that you kind of just took naturally? Uh, I think I would say I took it naturally because it's like a camera in your face. Like, oh my god, okay, it's like a bright ass light camera in your face. Right, so right. I just ignored it. I blocked the cameras out. So in, in, in going, so we watched the episodes, and you know, where are we in? Like episode five now, mm -hmm. I believe. Yeah. And um. You know, shout out to Karan. It's been a, a a great season so far, and, and it's I getting better. It's gonna get better. Yeah, I, I believe so. I believe he does amazing work. So shout out to him. But in the episodes that we did see, you know, you, you know, you did a lot of popping in and popping out, doing what you need to do, whatever the case may be. But these past couple episodes, it showed a lot more of you and your personality, and kind of showing of. Uh, I guess your storyline within uh, at least a piece of your storyline of what's going to be happening. So within this episode, you know, it was a lot of friction um, with Tay Anthony, you know. Was it me? What you say? I'm sorry. Hey, Tramel. All right, go ahead. Um, no, you're fine. It was a lot of kind of with this past episode, it was a lot of like, you know, tension with you and Tay Anthony of a situation that I feel like you should clear up. Because us watching, we see it, and we only get bits and pieces. Yeah, everybody's so, so confused. I wish 
like what the actual situation is. So can you kind of clear that up and let us know what's going in? Yeah, like most people are confused, and all the reason I'm confused because y'all not seeing like the whole thing. Karan can't make an episode with everything that we talked about. He can't right, because right, right, the right. Con the conversations can be long and dragged out. So he's making it to where y'all can get like bits and pieces. Like you really have to pay attention. The most of it, the gist of it. Right? Yeah. So what happened was me and Say Anthony, we was friends. We we're in college. So he would send me money through PayPal because his bank wasn't down here or something like that. I can't really remember it because it was so long ago. It was like last year. But it was like he would send me money through PayPal and his bank was down here. So I would take the money out for him so he can use at the club. And Tanthony was a good friend. I'm not going to lie. We both paid for each other's stuff to get in the club. If I didn't have it, then he would have it. If he didn't have it, I would have it. You know what I'm saying? Type friends like right. that. That's what so, friends do. Yeah, that's what right. friends do. And so basically, we basically, like, you know what I'm saying? We, I would say, like, we struggled together. But Tanthony Anthony would, like, he, he was, like, he's a good friend. He's a good friend. So, so, basically, so okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So the story. So that happened. And then I get the email from PayPal saying that, this charge has been disputed by so and so full name, like Tay Anthony's full name, and I knew his. I know and, his. And this is money that he sent you already. Yeah, that's what um, PayPal sent his full name in the emails. But I'm like, what's going on? Like it was like multiple emails. So I'm like, and then I look at my paper account, then I see negative so and so. So that's when I'm like. I'm I'm just ready to pop out. Cause like I say, if y'all know me, y'all know I have a smart mouth. I say what y'all want. So mind. wait, wait. Let me just let me just for for people that may not know what's going on. So and, and let me just say in the layman's terms, maybe just for my brain. Um, so he sent you money, mm -hmm. and then he disputed the money within the PayPal, which then PayPal took it back and gave it back to him. So. I'm not too is sure if he got. I'm not too sure if he got it back or not. I just know it was disputed. I seen a negative, and I went into savage mode and started getting mad and cutting bitches off and want to fight. And we then we fought when I seen him. So it was just like all this happened before the show. And the, and the money that was sent to you was sent by his good graces to send mm -hmm. you this money. Mm -hmm. Right, and then he just I was disputed it, and it, it it was taken away and stuff like that. Okay, so now so so with that being said, the conversation was taken. You know, you really didn't want to have the conversation, but it was had. He walked away. So what? I know you can't tell us too much, but from that moment, are you friends or are y'all trying to become friends or are you trying to really forgive him? Because I did see in the confessional where you were like. You know, we did have a good friendship, and I don't know. I want to just move past it. So, are you moving past it? So, w w what's the real situation with that? As much as you can say, um, I'm gonna just say it. <laughs> um, so, at that, why well, are you talking like at the moment or now? Both. Okay. Well, at the moment, I was still mad about it. I didn't want to get over it. Being a Capricorn, we kind of like hold grudges for a certain amount of time, but we will get over it after a amount of time. At the moment, I did not want, like, yeah, I was not like, even though he said sorry, like, I did not really want to get over it. So then, like, I was thinking about it a couple of, couple of like weeks later. Then I'm like, okay, it's over with. I don't give a fuck about it no more. It is what it is. And right. he, cl we cleared it up. It was a miscommunication. He said, that it was some, I don't even remember the story, to be honest with you. It was some weird shit, but it was a miscommunication. So I can only go off what he said. If he said he ain't do it, then he ain't do it. Facts. I mean, I mean that's all you, that's all you have. So with, with, with watching yourself, I know filming and, and watching yourself back is two different experiences. I People know keep calling yourself, me. I no, I understand. I know watching yourself and then filming is two different experiences. What is that like for you? Do are you happy with what you see being played back? I don't like watching myself. I hate myself on camera. <laughs> I do because I, well, I, don't, I, I don't like my voice. So, so 
what why wouldn't you like your voice? Is it something I that know. you feel like always that's the always place? been something. That's always been something. Like I do not like my voice. You can ask everybody, I do not like hearing my voice on T um like like even when I play a video, I play, like, oh my god, mute that. But I mean, it's not an insecure thing. I just don't like it. <laughs> so, are you happy with how they're portraying you? Because this, when you get on reality TV, a lot of people say, "Oh, they edit me this way. Editing is messed up. Editing is this way." Are you happy of how you, you know, you look at yourself? Yeah, because I feel like that was how exactly how it happened. And it's real. Yeah. So. So what? What's more, what, what 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 are you trying to get from this? Like, you know, what what's after the come up? After the come up? Well, shit, so much to happen after the show. Like, I wish he could film now. Because now I got so much going on. I'm not, I'm going to open, I'm going to, I can't really say what tomorrow is going to be right, right this second. But I'm doing something big tomorrow. And I'm releasing my mixtape. Um, I done, I done bought my, like, I've been, like, this whole year has been really successful for me. Like, I brought my first car. I'm only 19. And I'm I doing, that's right. I'm doing, like, basically, like, what grown people do. And I feel it's overwhelming, but it's, like, it's going to get done. I know that's right. That's, that's dope. So what would you tell, what would you tell people coming behind, you know, coming behind you that want to be rappers, that want to be on reality TV? What would you tell them? You know, that's maybe not getting it so quickly, or maybe that's you know struggling within getting there. What would you tell them? Have patience, and be open to learn, and be open to take criticism. This, mm. yeah, be open to. You're definitely gonna have to be open to criticism. Everybody's not gonna like your work, and not everybody's gonna like you and your personality. So you basically gonna have you have to know yourself if you want to step out into the entertainment. You have to know yourself, and you have to know, like, basically where you come from, because can't nobody tell you how to be you. And right. the thing is, if you can't take criticism, then it's not going to be for you, because you're going to look at what everybody say, and you're going to put it in your mind, and it's just going to be like, you're going to feel so attacked, and you're going to want to shut out, shut everything off. Hey, Ron. So what happens with, so that leads me to my next question. What happens when you see the comments of the show when it, it passes and stuff like that? How do you react to the comments? It's, you know, the negative and the good comments. I laugh at them. I love the comments. I love reading the comment section. It'd be so funny. And I like, and I reply sometimes with like, LOL. Like, it don't, I don't, it don't phase me at all. I promise you it don't phase me at all. So were you always a popular person or is this kind of, helping your career move along better? I'm not going to say I was... I don't, I don't like the popular term because people hold you to a certain judgment. I would just say I just have myself out there. I don't know how to explain it. I really don't. But I would say this show helped a lot because I'm getting followers. Out. I'm getting followers out there ass. Out there I know ass. that's good. Like, so it did help a lot. And, and, and does that relate to open more ideas because to be honest with you i started the royal couch and it was supposed to be and I, this is the first time i've ever saying this this was supposed to be a fun little video thing i did with my best friend and um I, this was supposed to be a fun little thing i did with my best friend and it turned to magazine covers you know, being on syndicated, you national, national syndicated radio stations and getting magazine deals. And I mean, a lot of stuff, you feel what I'm saying? And I never mm -hmm. knew it was going to take me this journey. What has this done for you and what has it done for your mind mostly to where you want to go now or kind of, you know, because opportunities can open doors that you never even thought about. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not, to, like right now, since it's only on episode five, I would say I can answer that question the right way at the last. I would say once the show's completely over, because okay. I can't say I what ha that. it has done for me when the show's not. You know what I'm saying? The show's not over yet, so right, people right, have right, yet right. not really yet to see all of it. 
I, so, no, I respect that, and I would love to have you back on after all of this so that we can talk about some more stuff that you got yeah. going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's like, it's hard to explain right now. No, I respect it. I respect it, and it, we will see it unfold, I'm mm -hmm. sure. Yes. <laughs> so, what is something that, you know, you can tell us about your love life? There's something, I see a lot in the comments when I read the comments, Oh, you know, he's so cute and you know, does he you know, does he have a you know, we don't know about his love life. You you haven't talked about it on the show, oh, not yet anyway. So This is what I'm talking this is my thing. I don't this uh I'm never gonna I I will put a title on my love life when I'm ready because I don't like my relationships in the open because people tend to like to be jealous of relationships, don't know why, and try to do what they can to break it up. And that's why I just like leave my relationship out of everything. So I don't like, I don't even like talking about it. But right now I'm doing me. I'm just saying I'm doing me. You're doing you. Yeah. I know that's right. So it, it, it is, is doing you a case of something that is just personal or something that you had experience with that you, because you know, usually I, I, I've dealt with, you know, putting my relationship on the forefront and it's, it went in my face and now I'm embarrassed, I'm ashamed because I'm looking stupid now. Has yeah. it something to do with that or is this something that you've always done? Well, yeah, it has something to do with that. Yeah, I can say that. I would just say as far as like that goes, it's, it has more so to do what I see. Like what I ha I see a lot of it. I see a lot of relationships and early because of social media it's, it's just social media as a whole it ruined a lot of shit so i like to live a yeah. private life yeah learning from what you've been through mm -hmm. i know that's right no and, and, and it's true because we do see a lot of the stuff and we still tend to do the same thing you know that's called insane doing the same thing over and over and over expecting different results mm -hmm. and we do the same things over and over and we expect different things to happen when we see the same thing, the same cycle happening all the time. So that's dope that you look at life like that, especially at your age. You don't meet many 19-year-olds that kind of have it together already. So that's dope. And I know that you're going to be very successful in your life, especially if you're doing what you're doing now, mm -hmm. at the age that you're doing now. So, like, God bless you. And, like, I think... You're inspiring a lot of people. Hell, I'm 31 and you inspired me to do better. So, oh, thank you. <laughs> no, definitely. I, I I love seeing that. Like, this, I think this is a beautiful thing. Young men, you could be doing a lot of other things, but you chasing your goals. Like, you mm -hmm. know, we need to we need to show a lot of more people, especially in our community, that we need to chase our dreams because it's it's hard to be us. Right. You know, what I mean? it's hard to be a man. It's hard to be black. But it's hard to, it's even harder to be a gay black man. In America. And you know what I'm saying? So it, I found it's crazy. Salute, I salute to you for real, for real. Thank you, Thank you so No, <laughs> no for real, I do salute you and keep on going, like for real, for real. And you have a fan over here, and I will remain to stream your music. I will Thank do you. whatever I need to do to support you. Vice and versa. You got things going, events, and all of that stuff. Please shoot and let us know so that we can, you know, attend and support Vice you versa. Like We're definitely got to support the people that, that. Su support you. Definitely. Yes, definitely. We do. We got to support each other out here, man. Mm -hmm. For real, for real. Mm -hmm. But thank you again for coming out to this platform. I would love to talk to you later mm -hmm. and when we can get a little bit more information on your life and, you know, what you got going on, especially All right. with the show. Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. That, mm -hmm. We got to. Because there's a lot of shit that's about to come up you haven't been seeing yet. It's a lot of hidden shit that been like that Quran even show yet. So I know that's right. <laughs> and I, I, I'll probably be seeing you in person at the reunion. I'm going to make sure that I make it to the reunion. So. Child. Child, the reunion. I don't even know what to say about that because that's going to be a hot mess. I believe it. It's going to be a hot <laughs> mess. And my thing, I don't know why People, I, I really say this all the time. People get Capricorn's personality. Like, they misunderstand us so much, like, a lot. And I do not know why. 
You're right. I do not know why. I'm so misunderstood a lot of time. Like, a lot, most of the time, I don't go on, I don't go looking for troubles, but somehow I find me. So, mm -hmm. Well, sometimes, sometimes the most, my, I, I grew up a little weird, you know, with my family, and my mother used to always say, you know, sometimes the most eccentric, the most, the people that you think are crazy, the people that have the, you know, ADD and ADHD and, and the people that we laugh at and the people that are made fun of are actually the most dopest people. It, dopest, important people in life. You feel what I'm saying? They're the most smartest. They're the most whatever. So even though what they say, even if they say that you're, you, you're complicated or whatever it is, I think you're here for a reason and you're meant to be complicated and you're meant to be this person because this is what's going to strive you from success. I think you're comp people probably don't understand you because you don't deal with bullshit. And a lot of people have bullshit. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And you don't deal with no nonsense. And no right. nonsense people are always misunderstood. So never fret about it. Be happy that people don't understand you because the people that do understand you are meant to be around you. Right. And I can agree you know? with that. Yeah, I can agree with that. So keep doing it. And, you know, I'm very misunderstood the way I think as well. So what's your sign? I'm an Aquarius. Oh, You're close, right close enough. Me. Yeah, you're right before me. You're right before. So. <laughs> <laughs> My mom are you Aquarius. In, you in December or January? January. Oh, I'm a January baby too. So. Mm hmm yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know what I mean? We're very like minded. So like I said, keep shining and you know what I mean, like keep winning. Like that's all. And you got my support for real for real. Yeah, you got mine too. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. No, thank you. Thank you. All love. Yeah. Yeah. This was a good conversation. <laughs> I thought so too. I thought so too. It, it, it's well needed and much more to come. Like I said, I really would love to have you back. Of course. Uh, and I'll come back anytime you want. Thank you so much. It was dope. And until next time, guys, I love you guys. Next week, we're going to have another edition of Thursday of the Come Up ATL after show. Um, I don't know who we're going to have yet, but it's going to be amazing. Wednesday we have Richie uh Richie who is an out uh hip hop artist. Mm, so that's okay. gonna be dope as well next week Wednesday. Um I don't know if you wanna say any last words to your fans. I just wanted to say just do you. Don't worry about what anybody say. I keep, I always tell people this, like don't worry about what people say you can only be the best you. I promise you. Nobody can make you be you. And I also want to shout out Karan because um he's very like he works very hard very hard for his craft and a lot of these a lot of fans don't realize how hard he works and they complain in the comments about how the episodes are not long how some don't make sense but he's really trying his hardest so you got to give him a shout out so got to no, he's, he's doing amazing work like shot super shout out to karan like karan keep shining you make it easy for us to shine, for real, for real. All mm -hmm. your hard work makes it easy for us to do what we got to do. So, right. honestly, you're doing an amazing job. The show is amazing. You're amazing. Keep shining for us. Right. Um, and, again, shout out, uh, shout out to you. Shout out to all the viewers, all my royals. I love you. Shout out to all uh, Stallions fans for making this show a great episode. Um, and until next time, we love you. Bye, y'all.